is the prohibition against eating blood for today. Here's why I think I would err on the side of caution on this one. The life is in the blood. Welcome to In Grace with Jim Scudder Jr. He is the senior pastor of Quentin Road Baptist Church in Lake Zurich, Illinois, and the president of Dayspring Bible College in Mundelein, Illinois. Hi, this is Jim Scudder, and you're listening to In Grace. That opening quote really says a lot about what I said in this message today. And all of you that like blood sausage might be writing me. But, um, you know, Genesis 9, and we're going to be going through this today in our origin series, talks about not eating blood. Now, is that still for today? Uh, we're going to go through scriptures and kind of go through the thought process of it. What does that mean and how would it affect us? And again, we have liberty in Christ, okay? So, but there are some things that we should take seriously and think about a little bit and, um, and, and see what the best thing to do is. Uh, also today, you know, the Bible talks about if someone sheds another person's blood, their blood should be shed. So that gets into another controversial topic that we'll uh, talk about today, and, and that's the death penalty. So there are important things that we're going to be learning from Genesis chapter 9 as we are studying the first parts of the book of Genesis verse by verse. And I'm excited about all of the things that we've learned so far and the things that we will continue to learn. Some of you listen to In Grace on a podcast. Many of you listen on the radio, of course. We're on 500 radio stations around the United States, and we're so thankful for networks like VCY America out of Milwaukee, but they cover a vast parts of our country, much of the Midwest, uh, the upper Midwest, and we're so thankful for VCY, great friends of ours. We've known of them and been on their stations for years. But also American Family Radio, many of you listen every day on American Family Radio, Radio, and they have a huge coverage as well. And then the Christian Satellite Network, more out west, uh, we're now on there and, and other stations. And, and listen, if you are listening on any of those stations, uh, drop us a note either on our website or write us or um, call us even and just say, hey, I'm listening on and then give us the call letters of the station you're listening on or the network. And that would really help us out because, you know, I'd like to know exactly who's listening, when and where and how. So uh, we would appreciate that. But we also podcast. So uh, you can find our, our radio program here at In Grace on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. Another thing that you might not know is that we put out a daily devotional by email. And if you'd like to sign up for that, it's absolutely free. You can go to our website, ingraceradio.com, and then look for the daily devotionals. And then another thing we've done recently is we put a devotional reading plan on the YouVersion Bible app. Um, millions of people are using YouVersion. And if you are, then look up In Grace and you'll find we had one of our plans go to, I think it's over 300,000 now, uh, people have downloaded that and are using our Bible plan on YouVersion. And so that's an app you can get on your smartphone and that'd be another way that we can connect with you here at In Grace. And then let me say one more thing before we go to the message and that is, would you consider traveling with us here at In Grace? We have put together three awesome adventures. We have a trip to Israel coming up in November, and we have two creation speakers coming with us. Dr. Carl Baugh and Carl Kirby are both coming. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so we'd invite you to our website, ingraceradio.com. Click on travel, and you can learn more about our November Israel trip. And then we're going to raft the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon in May, and uh, we'd love for you to come along. We have Andrew Snelling and Danny Faulkner, both PhD scientists with Answers in Genesis, coming with us, and we're also giving away a trip. So if you'd like to find out more about that, go to ingraceradio.com and again, click on travel. And the third trip coming up is in July of 2022, and we're going back to Alaska on a creation cruise. Bruce Malone will be our speaker. Majesty Music will be ministering to us in music. I'll be there, my wife, and we would love to meet you. And so check out our three trips coming up at ingraceradio.com. The beginning of things. Uh, I love having a starting point. Anything you do in life, you need a starting point. And if you're trying to figure out the ending of something, you want to start with a starting point. It's very helpful to get that established. And when you want to know why are we here, where are we going, 
having a starting point is so important. And have you ever wondered why we have a judicial system? You ever wondered why we have, in some states at least still, the death penalty? Have you ever wondered why we have rainbows? Not just the meaning of a rainbow, but the science behind a rainbow. Well, we're going to talk about all that as we look at Genesis chapter 9 and the story of the capital punishment, the institution of government and capital punishment, and also the significance of the rainbow. Now, you remember that Noah has just come off the ark. It it was a, a cataclysmic event. He survived. The only one alive, him and his family, that was it. The world had no other humans and no other animals. Now, remember at the beginning of creation... Creation, at least in the animal world, the fish world, the the bird world, life exploded on the scene. And it was just teeming with life. Except for Adam and Eve, they were the only humans. But other than that, the earth was full. But now it's just them. You have the animals, you have Noah, you have his family. Must have been a little bit of an eerie feeling in an eerie situation. And the last time we talked about Noah coming off the ark, we talked about the fact that he was given by God the command to be fruitful and multiply and also the command to be able to eat of an animal. Before that, it was prohibited. They would have been vegetarians before the flood, but now he is given permission to eat meat. But there's one thing that God tells him in Genesis 9, 4. He says, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Now that's unusual. And have you ever wondered why? Have you ever wondered why it was that God told Noah and people in the future from him not to partake in blood. Isn't it also interesting that the drinking or eating of blood is very much uh, in line with the occult and demonism? Now, I guess we want to ask the question, we'll stop here at verse 4 and ask the question, is the prohibition against eating blood for today? Now, I'll just tell you up front, I don't care because I don't like it. You know, you ever been served blood sausage? You know, every now and then on one of our travels, they'll put it, you know, on your plate, and you're just going, are you kidding me? So there's no, I'm okay with this. You know, even if it is for today, um, I'll just give you what my opinion is. But first, what does the Bible say? Well, we know that this is a pre-law prohibition. This is before the law of Moses. This is before the Ten Commandments. This is, in Noah's day, it was prohibited, as we just read in Genesis 9, 4. And there was a reason given for it. The reason was right there in the verse. Don't eat blood, and here's why. And then we have, under the law, we have the same prohibition, don't we? And this was very important, even today for a Jewish person, that they don't eat blood, They make sure also that the way the meat that they do eat is killed in a certain way, not strangled, but bled out. It's very important to the Jewish people to not have blood even in the meat that they're eating, and it's killed in a kosher way. And it says in Leviticus 17, 14, again, the the reasoning for it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, shall, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. So there's the reason, right? It's given again in law. And then after law, we actually still see it, which is a little surprising, isn't it? When we have this big Jerusalem council and they have these people that are saying to be saved, you have to be circumcised. And they came to the conclusion that no, salvation is not by any outward sign or symbol or keeping of the law. Salvation is a gift of God that must be received by faith, and that's it, right? 
That was their conclusion of the first, we call it the first grace conference. And literally, that's really what it was. They all came together to discuss this important issue is what must I do to be saved? But even in that conference, to, I don't believe as a rule as, or as a law, but as a request in order for the Jews and Gentiles to be able to come together with fellowship at a table, they said that they abstained from meats offered to idols and from blood. So there it is again, from things strangled. We have the same prohibition in Acts. So are you in sin if you eat blood sausage today? <laughs> I say yes, because I don't like it, right? But I also know in Colossians 2, it says that there's really nothing that you can eat that would be wrong. And it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday, a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So we have an idea that you can, hey, you can have pork as it would have been prohibited. You can have lobster, amen. That would have been prohibited. I'll take the lobster. You can have the blood sausage. You know, it's just crazy that people eat that. Anyways, so is it wrong to eat it? I'm going to just say, I don't know. I don't think it is, honestly. But I'm just going to always play it safe on things, right? Plus, I don't like it. So it, to me, it's no big deal. But it's interesting that it is found pre-law, under the law, and after the law. It's interesting. But I see it in Acts 15. I don't see it as a rule uh, as much as uh, this is probably the right thing to do so that there would be peace and there would be fellowship. Can you imagine if you have a, a Hindu friend that gets saved, but they've never, ever, ever had any meat and you have them over or you take them out to a Brazilian steakhouse? You know, it's just probably not a great idea just because they just have grown up repulsed by that, right? So we want to be sensitive. We want to be thoughtful. We want to be careful and uh, so I, I kind of think where that falls, but it does seem that it, there, there's such a reason behind this that it could be literally something that God doesn't want you to do today. I don't know, but here's why I think that it, I would err on the side of caution on this one. The life is in the blood, okay? Why is he saying this? They're just coming off the ark. The world had been full of violence. God squashed that violence, saved Noah and his family and the animals. Now they're going to repopulate the earth. He gives the permission to eat meat, but in that permission, he says to make sure the blood is drained and don't eat of that blood. Why? Because it says the life is in the blood. I believe it's because God gives life and that there should be a respect and a reverence for life. Obviously, the respect and reverence doesn't go so far as to prohibit you from eating an animal, because we know for sure that's fine to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But it still seems that there's a, a reverence that we should have for life, that God is the giver of life, and therefore to respect that, uh, the, the consuming of blood might still be prohibited. You're listening to In Grace with Jim Scudder, Jr. Stay tuned for the rest of today's message. In Grace is a listener-supported ministry. We rely on the Lord to take care of our needs. And if He is moving you to make an investment in grace, let us thank you by sending you an exciting DVD, A Tour of Noah's Ark with Bodie Hodge. When your gift is $35 or more, you will also receive two more DVDs, A Walk Through Creation with Ken Ham, and dinosaurs that destroy evolution. To get this limited time offer, call us at 800-78-GRACE. Go to ingraceradio.com or write to us at ingrace, P.O. Box 9, Lake Zurich, Illinois, 60047. Don't delay. Again, that's 800-78-GRACE or go to ingraceradio.com. And now we return to In Grace with Jim Scudder, Jr., the blood of animals was also very important because of the Mosaic sacrificial system. It was a picture of what? The precious blood of Christ. And so I think it's, it's significant. I think these things are important. I don't know if this is an operational rule today, but I have no problem keeping it. I have no problem. Again, it's not something that if you don't do it, you'll go to hell because salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful thing. 
But uh, again, there's certain things that we do need to be cautious of in this life. And uh, I do know that the blood is very precious and very wonderful because it's life itself. Without blood, there's no life. And isn't it amazing the Bible knew that when they were still bloodletting, thinking that you know, putting a leech on somebody was a good idea? And the Bible had already said, the life is in the blood. And uh, if animal life needs to be respected, how much more should we protect human life? Okay, so that's what we're going to get to in the next verse is the importance of human life. It says in Genesis 9, 5, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. In other words, life is super valuable, important. Murder had been around, right? People taking Someone else's life started very early. Right after sin, we read about the murder of Abel by his brother Cain. We read about a couple other instances of murder. And if the world was full of violence, no doubt, murder was happening rampantly before the flood. It's my opinion. We know of several instances in the Bible but I, I believe there's, there, there would have been a lot of that happening. So he's, God has saying, look, we value life. We value life so much that I don't want you to be eating blood because it's a picture of life. And if animal life is that important that I'm going to tell you not to consume that, how much more important is human life? Okay, human life is, is in the image of God, with the breath of God with an eternal spirit. And no one has the right to end that human life, except, and that's where we come to the next verse. And, and this is where people get confused. God is one that promotes life and the importance of life, especially human life. But then here, he's instituting what we would call the death penalty or capital punishment. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he men. Why is this right? Why is this right that God is commanding government, the establishment of government, society, if someone in society takes another person's life intentionally, that that person must forfeit the life? Because we're made in the image of God. Okay? Now, let's talk about this. This is some arguments that people are going to give you. Didn't God say not to kill? As a matter of fact, God did say in Exodus 20, part of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. So if God is saying thou shalt not kill, but then he's telling Noah and government to execute someone that took a life intentionally, then how do we, how do we accept both of those things as true? Well, I think you need to do a little study, right? As often we do. Anytime we see any type of conflict in the Bible, I don't believe the Bible has any contradiction. So there just has to be an understanding of context or understanding of word meanings. Well, the word meaning here in kill is really simple, okay? It's resek. Resek is the word that means murder, okay? So maybe the translation should have been, thou shalt not murder, but either way it means murder. Thou shalt not murder is the commandment. And by the way, the Ten Commandments, we can't keep because if you have hatred in your heart towards someone, you've committed murder in your heart. And in God, that's the same thing as an actual act, okay? So we can't keep the law even in that one, but God isn't saying don't kill. God is saying thou shalt not murder, right? And if you've murdered, therefore you forfeited your life according to what God has said. And I do believe that is a uh, principle that should be in operation today because without that, life has no value. Human life has no value. And you can see it uh, happening in our society, in our streets, in Chicago. You think that's part of our epidemic of violence? I think it sure is because we have a moratorium on capital punishment. And, and let me just say this. I have some experience in this. I'm not an expert, but I have been on death row probably seven times. I've been to visit inmates on death row and uh, brought some of you with me. We've had some of you singing on death row. 
There's at the prison in Angola that we've gone to, there's all these different wings. Each wing has probably 10 cells and eight to 10 of those are full of people that more than likely deserve to die, right? Uh, so I've been there and I know what they've been convicted of and I'm friends with one of them. But I still say this is a biblical principle and, uh, and it is a deterrent. So you have three areas of self-defense that the Bible allows, that God allows. The one is national and if there's a soldier and our country is attacked and we defend ourselves, if that soldier kills another soldier, uh, he is not guilty to God. He's, it's defending the nation. You have personal self-defense, and if someone is attacking you and uh, they're threatening your life, you have by all means the, the right before God to defend yourself in such a way, even to killing that person. We don't, we'd hate to ever do that, but obviously that's what we should do. If my family's in danger, my wife's in danger, my children are in danger, my grandkids are in danger, uh, we have uh, protective measures in our home that would protect them, um, self-defense. And then the third is social self-defense. And I've been into death chambers. I've been into the places where they actually strap down the inmate. I've been into the gallery where the witness or the, the victim's family would have been watching it and the press. I've uh, been into the room where they eat the last meal. I've heard a lot of the stories of all of that. And it's sad, but it's also necessary. Why? Because it's the only thing that will promote innocent life, okay? Which is a lot of people say, well, you're pro life in the area of abortion, but you are pro-death penalty, and I'd say we're pro-innocent life. You know, this person has taken a life, premeditated, and therefore, according to Scripture here in Genesis chapter 9, we're given clear, and throughout Scripture, by the way, uh, clear directions on how to handle that if we want to have a society that won't have as much violence. And we're going to pause here tomorrow. We'll talk more about the death penalty and why I do believe it's an important part of our society today. Right before we go, though, I've, uh, I've been so excited about so many of you, hundreds of you that are contacting us to get the ARC tour. Uh, you all have heard about this full-size ARC in Northern Kentucky with our friends at Answers in Genesis. Well, Ken Ham's son-in-law, Bodie Hodge, gives me a full tour, and we filmed it, and it's incredible. I'd like to send you this Tour of Noah's Ark DVD as a thank you for your generous financial support to this ministry. When you give to InGrace, more people, many more people will hear the gospel. And I'm so thrilled that we can use broadcasting and streaming to get the gospel out there. And then you get a win because you get an exciting DVD in your mailbox. And I'd love for you to get a tour of Noah's Ark with Bodie Hodge. Again, my thank you for your gift to In Grace. If your gift is $35 or more, I'd like to send you two more awesome creation adventures that you can only get from us here at In Grace. I got to tour the Creation Museum in the same area as the Ark at the area of Northern Kentucky. It's the Cincinnati metropolitan area with the founder of Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham. And he gave me a full tour and it was awesome, beautiful museum. They have a lot of new things there. And so we're going to show you the latest of that. And I think you'll really enjoy that. And a third DVD, if your gift is 35 or more, is Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. We found dinosaurs intermixed in the same layer in Colorado as we were doing a dig that should not have lived at the same time. Well, we know the biblical account is all the creatures, all of the animals, the mammals were created on day six. And so we would have lived when dinosaurs lived and all the dinosaurs would have lived at the same time. And so you've got to see this adventure, Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. I think you'll love all three of these DVDs. A tour of Noah's Ark for your gift of any amount. And then a gifts of 35 or more. We're going to send you two more. A walk through creation with Ken Ham and Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. Listen, these are great resources. You can't get these anywhere else. These will help educate you. It'll strengthen your faith. It'll give you answers to a lot of the questions people are asking. And more people will hear the gospel when you give a gift to In Grace. I really would love to hear from you today. You can call us. You can go to our website. You can write to us. And we'll give you all that information in just a moment. God bless.
Just call us, 800-78-GRACE, or go online, ingraceradio.com. You can also write to us at InGrace, P.O. Box 9, Lake Zurich, Illinois, 60047. Thank you for joining us on InGrace Radio with Jim Scudder, Jr. InGrace is a member of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Our goal is to share the light of Jesus to a darkening world, helping you find hope, gain purpose, and be a light. You can be that light today by joining our mission to spread the gospel around the world. Just call us, 800-78-GRACE, or go online, ingraceradio.com. You can also write to us at InGrace, P.O. Box 9, Lake Zurich, Illinois, 60047. Tune in tomorrow as we continue to explore God's Word and His world on InGrace Radio. Radio.